and I want to welcome everyone that's joining us now by television and by radio. We appreciate that, and by the World Wide Web, uh, we appreciate that. Hopefully that this uh, service will be a blessing to you. If you have your Bibles, like to read along with us, we'll be reading in the book of Psalms. I'm going to be reading some things there. We'll try to get the words up here on the screen here in just a minute. And uh, then we'll be going to the New Testament and reading uh, some scripture there hopefully will be a blessing to you. And I'm going to be talking about Jesus cares for his sheep. And that's what I'm going to be talking about tonight and being one of his sheep. And the sheep hears the voice of the master. And the sheep will not hear or follow the voice of a stranger. Amen. And I thank God it's that way. And when we know that we know that we've heard from the Lord, then we can have comfort in uh, what we've heard from Him, what He tells us to do. Amen. And, and I'm thankful uh, that it's that way. And sometimes we, we fail to really pray until we hear from the Lord. Sometimes we get impatient and we follow our emotions. We look at the circumstances that's around us or we listen to friends. Amen. Or we'll read articles or we'll let the news media inspire us to where if we're not careful, we'll miss the Lord. There's been a lot of people that's been led astray by listening to the voice of people rather than listening to to the voice of the Lord. And how am I going to know it's the voice of the Lord? There's never been a voice like it before. Amen. I can tell you that right now. It's the same one that you felt in your spirit when you know that you passed from death unto life, that you became a born again child of the Most High God. Amen. It's that same feeling, that same voice. And when the Lord speaks to you and gives you the comfort, uh, amen, when the voice of a stranger speaks to you, you just won't get the comfort, uh, amen, as you do when the Lord speaks to you. It's completely different. But I'm going to go back into the Old Testament first of all. And this scripture I'm going to be reading out of Psalms 23 here in just a little bit. Uh, it's used in few Funerals, and um, I've used it a few times in funerals, and most of the time uh, in your uh, the, the little uh, pamphlet that they gave you uh, at the funeral home, it'll have the 23rd Psalm in it because it's a, a psalm that gives encouragement to people that are mourning uh, in a time of, of death and a, maybe a bad time that's in their life. And all of us have had bad things that's happened to us, but this is Psalmist David. Just telling how good his God is and how that he has nothing to worry about and how that he can take comfort, uh, amen, and knowing that the Lord is leading him wherever it is that he's going. I'm going to do a little teaching and preaching. I uh, kind of hear, uh, I'm going to kind of try to take my time and not get in a hurry. Uh, if you'll read with me now, if you'll put this on the screen, in Psalms 23 and verse number 1, this is what it says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's go to John chapter number 10 now. St. John's Gospel chapter number 10, verse number 1. And listen to what Jesus had to say. Verily, verily, and again those words verily means truly. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the porter is the doorkeeper. And the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, 
but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they may have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not, see if the wolf coming, leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The harling fleeth because he is a harling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doeth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. Folks, if they don't put you on shouting ground, I don't know what it's going to take. Amen. Matthew 25, verse 31 says, When the Son of Man shall come in His glory, and all the holy angels with Him, shall He sit upon the throne of His glory, and before Him shall be gathered all nations, and He shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And He shall set the sheep on His right hand, but the goats on the left. Let's pray. Father, in the loving name of Jesus, thanking you, Lord, for being such a good God. Thanking you, Lord, for hearing and answering prayer. For always being there to meet every need, Father, that we have. Asking you, Lord, to bless and, Father, move powerfully, Lord, on the hearts of everybody that's here. All this watching by the internet, all this watching by television, and all this listening by radio. Help us, Lord, to preach this message tonight to touch people's hearts, to move people, Lord, and to cause them to understand and to know, Lord, that we are loved and we are blessed by our Good Shepherd. Lord, that we can find favor in, in your eyes. And we know, Lord, that we've always been blessed and we always will be blessed. And help us, Lord, to always, Lord, be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And help us, Lord, that we might be able to hear your voice and hear your voice clearly. And help us, Lord, to never listen to the voice of the hireling. And never listen to the voice, Lord, of the stranger today. But, Father, help us to listen to the voice of our Master, Jesus Christ, that we might know, that we know, that we know, that we've heard from heaven. And, Lord, that we've been told the truth and led in the right direction. Father, I thank you for the joy of your salvation. And I thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Asking you, Lord, to bless and move in a mighty and a powerful way. And it's in Jesus' loving name we humbly pray and ask these things. Amen. Ever since the very beginning, way back in the Old Testament, in the days of David, David knew about the character of God and how that God's character was to always love his creation. And those that would love him and follow his word, uh, amen, he would give them favor, he would bless them. Uh, David, the psalmist David, messed up. He done wrong. He committed adultery. But he also repented, uh, cried out to the Lord, and the Lord received received him back, gave him full 
full part of pardon, amen, and allowed him to be blessed, highly favored, uh, amen, for the rest of his life. Uh, he had favor with God. I'm so thankful, amen, that God's married to the backslider, aren't you? I'm thankful if we make a mistake and we fail, he'll take us back. I'm glad that when we stumble and we fall, he's there to pick us up, not to push us down, not to step on us, uh, not to kick us in the ribs, uh, but to give us a hand to help us out of the place uh, where we stumbled uh, to give us hope uh, and direction, uh, amen, once again in our life. Uh, amen, the psalmist David here was saying some things, uh, amen, that is very powerful. I'm going to go back and read uh, Psalms 23 one more time, but before I read that, I want you to understand, you can think about the good shepherd, Jesus Christ, uh, while David, even though he hadn't seen the good shepherd yet, uh, Jesus had not yet came, but he knew the character of our Father, our Heavenly Father. He knew his character, and wow, if the, uh, God and his wonderful character, his son has got to be part of him. His son's got to have the same character that the Heavenly Father, amen, had. Praise God. And they're all three in one, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I'm thankful, amen, that they are. I'm thankful, amen, I'm going to get to the Father through the Son, and the Son sent back the Holy Ghost, and he lives inside of me. Praise God. I tell you, that will put you on shouting ground. Amen. I want to make you happy and encourage you. Look back into Psalms 23 uh, and verse 1. Listen to what he said. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want, period. Amen. That was a phrase. That was a statement. That's all that need to be said about that particular statement. The Lord is my shepherd. I, I shall not want. Now, Brother Jimmy, I want this and I want. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about I will never have need. You cannot starve a Christian to death. We may go through some trials. Uh, we may go through some hard times. Uh, amen. The Apostle Paul, amen, went through a time, amen, when he was hungry, but he did not starve. It was only a temporary test, uh, and the Lord restored him. Amen. David knew that the Lord is my shepherd, and when the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Let's look at the sheep here for just a minute. Now, the sheep uh, depended completely upon the shepherd, uh, amen, for their food. I'm going to tell you about the difference between a sheep and a goat. Amen. The sheep uh, always eats looking down because he's humble and he listens to the voice of the shepherd. And when the shepherd calls him to the new pasture field uh, on the other side of the hill over there, they all run to where they hear his voice and it's the shepherd's job, amen, to protect them and to lead them to another pasture. Praise God, amen, so that they can eat, uh, amen, and they can be filled, uh, amen, and they can raise their families, uh, amen, and be happy, amen, knowing that the shepherd has taken care of them. I don't know where you're getting this or not, uh, amen, this ought to make us jump, uh, amen, the Lord is my shepherd, uh, I shall not want. He didn't say I could want. He said the Lord is my shepherd. Amen. Saying it with victory. Amen. With positive faith. And I will not starve. I will not lack anything. Well, if you get this message across, uh, amen, to people that are begging the government to keep them up, uh, amen, <laughs> amen, and let them understand, amen, the word says, seek you first the kingdom of God, Matthew chapter number six, uh, amen, uh, and, and he is righteousness, and all these other things uh, shall be added unto us. Now, we've got to work, uh, amen, there's some things we've got to do, amen, in order to be fed, uh, amen, but the Lord is my shepherd. Uh, if the Lord is our shepherd, we're going to be following him. If we're we're following him. How do we follow him? We follow him by his voice and we follow him by his word. Amen. And if we're following his word, uh, following his voice, uh, we've got the promise uh, that we will not want. Amen. If you get discouraged, we can cry out to the Lord. We shall not want. He will send the comforter. What's the comforter's job? To comfort us. Amen. Simple. Elementary, my dear Watson. Amen. Elementary. So simple. Amen. The Lord made the Word of God uh, so simple. Uh, if we'll just really call out to the Lord. Uh, amen. And, and let me get you something in this that we hadn't 
maybe thought of before, when we're following the Lord, uh, amen, and we know that we're not going to want, uh, we listen to his voice, uh, and when we get to the place we can't hear the Lord, then we know we need to be crying out to him. Amen, a sheep, amen, gets off down in a hole somewhere that he can't see the rest of the sheep that's following the, uh, the shepherd. They can't, he can't hear the voice of the shepherd. He gets scared. Bang, bang. Amen, Lord, I'm over here. Lord, I failed you. Lord, I took my eyes off of you and I got myself in jail. I got myself in trouble. Oh, Lord, I didn't hear your voice and I'm hung over here in the bushes. Thank God. Amen. The word said, we're not the good shepherd. Leave the 99 and go after the one sheep that went astray. This over in the bush is saying, Lord, I can't hear your voice anymore. Lord, I'm scared. You ever get scared? I've been scared a lot of times. And I had to cry out to the Lord. Thank God he's a good shepherd. Thank God he's always heard me. He's always listened to me. When I cried out, when my heart was broken, when I was in trouble, the Lord is my shepherd and I said I won't. Well, glory, I'm thankful, amen, that I don't have to worry about anything. I shall not want. Praise his name. Amen, the Lord is my shepherd. See, David didn't stutter. He didn't shake or quake. Amen, he said it with authority, with sincerity, but with surety that he believed and he knew that he knew that he knew he had confidence in God. Whew, now that'll preach. Amen. Man will let you down. Organizations will let you down. The government, don't get me started, will let you down. Amen. People, family will let you down. But his word will never let us down. And we've always got the confidence, no matter how far back I go, no matter how far down I get, the Lord will hear me. He's a good shepherd. And all I got to do is just cry out to him. Oh, Lord, it's me again. Amen. And he'll come to my rescue. Thank God. He's always there to meet the needs that I've got. Amen. And he's there to bless me when I put my faith and my trust in him. Woo. Praise the Lord. I may have me a running spell. <laughs> Let's look at verse number two. We might not get through all of this. Verse number two. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Oh, Listen here. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. In other words, he sets it up uh, to where I've got a plenty to eat. Uh, when I lay down and rest, uh, I don't have to go to sleep at night uh, thinking today I'll eat uh, and tomorrow I'll die. But I know I can lay down in green pastures, uh, amen, and take a nap, uh, amen, at bedtime at night uh, and to know, uh, amen, that the Lord has got my back. Amen. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Uh, amen. Now we got hay and we've got pastures. The hay will get you through the winter time. But see, he didn't say, I'll give you good rolls of hay or I'll give you some square bales uh, of alfalfa. He said, I'll give you green pasture. Uh, the green pasture lasts year round. Won't need no hay baler. I hope you're getting this. Won't need any leftover stuff. Woo, <laughs> that came from yesteryear, but he'll let me lay down. He maketh me. He, 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 he controls me. Uh, he sets it up for me that I'll lay down uh, in green pastures uh, where it's growing while I'm sleeping. Uh, he's getting ready for the next spiritual meal. Amen. When I get down, uh, amen, and I face a hardship uh, and I face a trial in life, uh, he's already got the grass growing on the other side of the hill where I ain't never been before. Woo. Ah, man, I'm telling you what, folks. <laughs> Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. I, I shall not want. Uh, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Uh, Amen. He created me. Uh, Amen. To be blessed uh, and highly favored. Uh, he set me up. Uh, Amen. To where I will be <laughs> comfortable. Whoo. Man, man. Bless him, Lord. Bless me, Lord. Help me, Lord, to get this out. Uh, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Uh, amen. Nothing to worry about. Uh, whatever comes, uh, he will feed me. When the devil comes against me, amen, I may have to go through a trial, but I'll have plenty to eat uh, from the master's table. Anytime we go back to an altar, no matter where it's at church, 
at home or wherever it might be. The Lord has got some green pasture. Amen. Not saw briars, not thistles, a green pasture. Now there's a difference between a pretty green pasture than one that's got a bunch of old dead briars and last year's uh, uh, blackberry briars and all that stuff to where it's not been bush hog or mowed. Uh, amen. When I read this, uh, I see this. I don't see anything but beautiful green grass. Uh, amen. Might even have a little Kentucky bluegrass in it. I don't know. But it's some good stuff to eat. I can tell you that right now. Amen. And he maketh me to lie down in the green pastures. Uh, not in a field looking at the green pastures, uh, but lay down in everything I have need of. Amen. When I lay down. Woo. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Amen. There's one thing that you need to know. Amen. Probably need to put the camera back on me, hon. Uh, my wife's learning to run the camera tonight, and uh, but she'll fire me after a while sometime or another. Amen. But when the Lord, amen, is, is blessing us and he's leading us, he leads us beside the still waters. Now here's the thing about the sheep. Amen. The sheep are scared of running water. Amen. And see uh, what David was saying here. He's not uh, going to cause me or lead me beside, uh, amen, of the running water. He's not going to keep me nervous. He's not going to keep me stressed. Uh, he's going to lead me, amen, beside the still waters uh, so that I can drink uh, anytime that I want to and I won't have to be afraid to call upon the Lord. Woo-wee. Amen. I won't never have to worry about calling upon the Lord. Amen. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Not the rowing waters, but that water that's pooled up. Amen. That big pool where there's a bottomless pit. Amen. That's full of water. Amen. As deep as you want it to be. Always cool. Always clear. Always clean. And always relaxing. Ooh, I'm going to tell you, every time I ever sit down beside, amen, a uh, cool uh, stream, uh, amen, it made me want to go to sleep. I get so relaxed, uh, amen, and watch a little leaf just float around, uh, amen, just call, it just calms you. I'm thankful that he leads me beside uh, the still waters. Uh, verse 3 says, he restoreth uh, my soul uh, when I need uh, to be lifted up. Uh, he gives me what I have need of uh, when I call upon him. Uh, if I get cold. He warms me up. If I get hungry, he fills me up. Amen. When I get scared, he gives me comfort, whatever I have need of. That's what the Lord, amen, gives me. David here was absolutely sure he restoreth my soul. You ever have anybody get around you, amen, that pulls you down? You ever have everybody get around you, amen, that kind of messed you up because of their attitude, jumped off on somebody else, amen, and then they jumped off on you. I'll go ahead and say amen for you. Amen to help you out that much. You might not want to say amen, but you know it's the truth. It's, we're easy sometimes, amen, to be inspired by other people. That don't mean you're going to act exactly like the one that you happen to be around, but they're going to pull against you is what I'm trying to say. Amen. It's going to cause you, amen, to get cold. Amen. Listen, you can't focus on the things of God and focus on business, focus on the world to where every minute of your time is just think, 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 think ahead, get this done, get that done, do this over here, what did I forget, what I got to do, amen, listen, if you're not careful, you'll get crusted over and become cold, amen, because the cares of the world and the responsibilities, amen, that we have, those of us that are responsible, that's another message for another time. Some folks is not responsible because they don't give a hoot, amen, whether the sun comes up or not. <laughs> I'm not getting into that. Better get off of that before I wind up breaking this wonderful spirit here. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. Notice here, he didn't say he leadeth me through the hell holes. He didn't say he leadeth me through the saloon. He didn't say he leadeth me, amen, through all the ugly places and ungodliness, but he leads me in the path of righteousness where we're following the voice of the Lord. He will never lead us astray. He will never lead us, amen, to hurt or to kill or to destroy somebody or to destroy somebody's property. Amen. 
Now, these people try to blow up abortion clinics and things like that and say the Lord told them to. Amen. Uh, just a nuts, all I'm going to say. Amen. If the Lord don't lead. If you're going to lead a protest, uh, it'll be something on a piece of paper or sign a petition. Uh, amen. Or, or make a speech uh, or write a letter. It won't be blowing up somebody. Amen. The Lord will lead us in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He's got his name on us. Amen. When we're born again of the Spirit of God and we're going to be his sheep, his name is on us. And for his name's sake, amen. Why? Because the Lord wants to always for us to understand that he's holy. He said, because I'm holy, he said, be ye holy also. Right? Amen. So we need to live right, allow him to lead us in the paths of righteousness. I've seen people out there that said I'm a following the Lord. If they're following the Lord, I'm a monkey's uncle. Amen. No matter what some of you thought, I really am not. Amen. Amen. Listen to me for just a minute, folks. Amen. The Lord, amen, will lead us in the paths of righteousness. Amen. If we're following the Lord, we will not have that ungodly lifestyle. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. He said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, just in the valley of the shadow of death. Let me stop there for just a minute. Where would that be? If we lose loved ones, uh, that's in the valley of the shadow of death. Uh, you're not dead yourself, but your heart is crushed uh, over someone that you love very much. Uh, and he said, I'll be with you. Amen. The Lord's going to be with you. Though I walk uh, through the valley of the shadow of death, uh, he said, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Amen. Listen to what he said. He said, Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The rod of the Lord, amen, will beat back the wolf. The rod of the Lord will beat back the bear. The rod of the Lord, amen, will beat back, amen, temptations, amen, and trials, amen, and, and, and criticisms, amen. It comes against you, amen, as you're trying to follow the Lord, as you're listening to his voice. Amen. He said, and his staff will comfort me. Thank God for the crook uh, on the end of the staff where he can run it back in the briars, uh, amen, bushes and pull us back out, uh, amen, so he can get us uh, and lead us to safety, amen. David knew that whatever happened, uh, the good shepherd uh, was going to be with him. He had his back. He's going to comfort him. Verse 5, thou preparest uh, a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Wow, you're going to set a table in front of me uh, before my enemies uh, and you going to fix it so my enemies can see that I'm eating good. Amen. Sometimes our enemies uh, say, well, look at there. They'll never make it. Uh, they're going to fall just as sure as I'm here. They'll never amount to anything. Uh, amen. But the Lord's going to prepare a table for you to eat from, and your enemies is going to be invited to stand and watch. They won't get none of it. Oh, man. Won't that preach? Amen. Those that tried to put you down, you keep your mouth shut. Allow God to fight the battles for you and for me. Amen. Let's let God bring the giant down. Amen. That's in our lives. And let's let God, amen, help us through every situation. And when we do that, amen, we're going to be happy. Amen. Because we're going to know, amen, that the Lord has blessed us. He has fed us. Amen. Right in front of our enemies. And our enemies are going to feel foolish. Amen. They're going to feel bad. There's a lot that I could say, and I'm not going to because I've had a lot of attacks, uh, amen, from people that have done it through ignorance, uh, amen, in the past. Uh, I'm thankful I forgave every one of them, uh, amen, and those uh, that done what they done, uh, they feel pretty silly right now. Amen, because they saw the Lord lift me up all these years, uh, amen, they were waiting for me to fall. Amen, he blessed me in the presence of my enemies. Amen. He saw, amen, or allowed me to see. Amen. They ain't nothing that makes you feel any. You know what it's like when you get just beat down into the ground? Amen. By people sometimes, amen, they just hurt your feelings, just beat you into the ground. They ain't nothing that feels any better. That felt really bad. Nothing feels any better just sitting and smiling at them. 
Amen. As they see the Lord bless you right in front of them, you want to say, I told you so, but you just keep your mouth shut. You don't have to say a word because what God's doing, it'll speak of fathoms of depth, amen, into their mind, into their spirit, and into their heart, and you and I won't have to say anything. Amen. They'll start watching the Lord lift you up, and they'll see you way up here. Amen. And they'll know you didn't get there by yourself. It was God that got you there, and they're going to know, uh, amen, the Lord has blessed you, uh, and they're going to feel pretty doggone silly, amen, trying to destroy your ministry or whatever it is that you're doing, uh, amen, later on uh, when the Lord has lifted you up. I'm telling you what, David knew the heart of God. There's no doubt about that. He said, Thou anointest my head with all, my cup runneth over. Praise God. He said, you anoint my head with oil. Amen. Speaking of the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. And when uh, the oil was anointed on the head, it would run down like on Aaron and run down Aaron's beard. Amen. When he was anointed, listen, folks. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord will cover us. Amen. And your cup runneth over. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It don't just get full. Amen. I like that song. Amen. That the brother sings, drinking from the saucer because my cup has run over. Hallelujah. Amen. My cup has run over. I was thinking today as I was watching one of the grandchildren play uh, how blessed I am. I got five grandchildren and one on the way. I got living toys to play with. Amen. For the, <laughs> for the next several years. Can I go ahead and tell you this? My grandson was down in the floor and I said, now honey, I'm going have to go back here in the office. Paul's got to do some study and I got to preach. He said, no, Pa, no, no, Pa. Oh, and I said, well, I'll come back in for just a minute uh, and, and play with you. But I got, and, and every time I tried to get out of sight, he'd just scream. It was so precious. Jenny was just laughing. She said, isn't that the sweetest thing you've ever seen? I said, yeah. And of course, my head swelled. It made me feel good. He made my, he anointed my head with all, and my cup runs over. <laughs> Woo, glory. He made the Lord is blessed, and he's blessed, and He's blessed, and I think every time that he's anointing my life, uh, and every time I get a phone call, uh, and somebody says, you're preaching, touch me, and I feel something in my heart, uh, would you pray for me? Amen, it makes me know that my cup, uh, amen, has had some more poured in it. Uh, amen, my cup is full, uh, it's run over, I'm drinking from the saucer, the table's wet, and it's down in the floor, and it's in my shoes. <laughs> well, glory, amen, because he's blessed my life, uh, and gave me more than what I deserve, uh, amen. Amen, gave me more than I could ever dream of uh, ever having. Uh, and Brother Jimmy, are you rich? I ain't talking about money. I got a little of that, very little, but I got some of that too. I'm getting by. And all he's promised me is that I'll get by. Amen. I work hard. I'm honest. I do what I know is right uh, according to the word of God. I listen for the voice of the shepherd, uh, and I shout when he blesses me. Amen. Praise God, I can't take enough time to count all my blessings because the floor's full, amen, of blessings and my shoes is running over. After my cup, my saucer got full. How many can say the same thing about yourself, that God's blessed you that much, amen, in a lot of different ways? Are you grateful? I hope that you're grateful, amen. I sure hope you are. Listen, verse number six, and in the conclusion of the matter, listen to what he said. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <laughs> mm. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me the rest of the time I've got left here and then I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever. And time would have just began. Amen. When we got to all them forevers, it's the end of them. There's no end. Amen. To the word forever, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He's trying to say the rest of my life will be a life that's going to be blessed. And then the Lord has prepared a place for me. <laughs> Eyes not seen, ear is not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what God has in store for them that believe, that believe in him. Woo! 
Praise the Lord. Man, you need to come and see my mansion. Amen. I hope you've got one too. If you're ready to meet the Lord, uh, amen, you got a mansion waiting for you. If you're not ready to meet the Lord, uh, you need to come to this altar. Give us a phone call. Let us pray with you so you know that you're ready, amen, to meet the Lord. I'm not going to change the message, but I want to tell you this. We're living in the last days, uh, amen. If, if you live to be uh, 30 more years older than what you are right now, we may none of us be here in another month or, or, or a year from now. You understand what I'm saying? by what we're seeing going on in the Middle East right now out of rooting, tooting, Putin, amen, in Russia and all the stuff that's going on over there, amen. I, I'm not getting into the politics, uh, amen, even though it's important to watch uh, and you watch how they encamped, uh, amen, around Israel uh, and look at the prophecies in the Word of God uh, and what's going to happen, uh, amen, at the very end. Folks, uh, we're drawing to an end. Uh, you better be ready, amen. The Word of God says make your callings and election sure. Uh, we better know that we know that we know that we're Pass from death unto life uh, because we love the brethren. Uh, we better know, amen, that we're following the voice of the shepherd. Uh, we're not following the voice of religion, uh, not following the voice, uh, amen, of a big leader somewhere, but following the voice of Jesus. Uh, amen, not following the Pope, uh, amen, but following Jesus. Uh, amen, not following Jimmy Wilson, uh, but following Jesus. Uh, he's, the, he's the shepherd, uh, and we need to be listening to him. Amen, those that knows the Lord, uh, amen, knows his voice is different. Uh, amen, in John chapter number 10 that I read just a few minutes ago, we see here in the word of God, amen, how that Jesus said, I am the door. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. Uh, he said that I know my sheep, uh, and my sheep hear my voice, uh, and they uh, do not hear the voice uh, of a stranger. My wife was letting the young grandson, two-year-old, the youngest one, all the grandchildren, uh, watch an old tape that was taped here uh, down at the old church or something many years ago, and she said that I didn't look any a whole lot like I do right now. Back at that time, I had hair, and all I had wasn't a gray and salt and pepper. It just uh, all pepper back then. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, it had been several years ago, and uh, she was afraid when I was preaching on this tape she was looking at that he wouldn't know who I was, but his back returned. He said, Pa? Because he heard my voice. He would have never seen me. <laughs> he would have never probably recognized me because I would look so much different than I did back then. But he caught that voice and he said, Pa. And he turned around to the television and he said, Pa. He may listen. He heard the voice. God's people will hear his voice. And when he tells you where to go to church, that's where you're going to have to go. You can't listen to the voice of family. You can't listen to the voice, amen, of your spouse. You've got to listen to the voice of a shepherd today, Jesus Christ. Amen. we got folks who drive almost an hour one way just to come to church here because the Lord told them to. The Lord told them to come here. They heard the voice of the Lord. They're the happiest folks I've ever seen in my life. Amen. They're volunteering to do something all the time around the church. And I think, wow, where y'all been for the last 40 years? <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. But, I, but I'm thankful. Amen. Because they heard the voice of the Lord. And the Lord said, go down here. He didn't say go to the church next door. He said, go down here. I don't know why, but the Lord wanted them here. For some reason, maybe I needed to help. I don't know. Maybe we can help each other. I don't know. Amen. But you better listen to the voice of the Lord. And any church that's alive is worth the drive. It don't matter how far you have to drive. Amen. We've got folks coming all the way up from way up around Mumfordville and up above Mumfordville, up the edge of Greene County, coming down here to church. I thank God for that. Praise the Lord. And I'm even preaching to people in Africa. Amen. Got two churches over there. And let me go ahead and say this. One of the pastors sent me an email the other day and said, the way I understood it, they're gathering around the TV there in Kenya, and he's playing the tapes, the DVDs of our TV program, and then we've got some Bible studies and, and Sunday school lessons that I've taped and sent over there where I'm teaching, and he said that they're, they're coming in from everywhere, and, and they're watching and, and uh, the, the teachings of the DVDs that I sent over there, and he said they're getting saved before that they leave. I tell you what, it made me feel, feel at least two foot taller, amen, when I heard that. Man, that really blessed me, that the word of God is going out. Amen. We need the word of God. Jesus is the good shepherd. Amen. We don't never need to look at circumstances. Some of you, I need to do a little teaching here. I've been happy and about had me a fit two or three times. I've got to slow down and teach a little now. 
there's been a lot of people that have had family and friends that really meant well, amen, that tried to steer them, amen. Listen, we can't follow after people. People will, will they'll mean well, but they'll wind up causing us to crash. That's all there is to it. Because you've got people that will try to get you to be at their church. You've got family. I remember when I left the home church that I grew up in. Uh, back in 1982, you almost had to bury some of my family. Uh, they, th they had it visualized that I'd be there till I was old and gray-headed. I didn't know that I wouldn't be there till I was old and gray-headed, except I heard that still small voice speak to me, and he, and he led me uh, to do something different. I had to follow him, and I am where I am today because of him, not because of anything that I did. If I'd listened to me, I'd have failed a long time ago. If I listened to people, I, amen, I'd have been bogged down, clogged up, uh, amen, broken, uh, amen, and overwhelmed, uh, amen, with the cares of the world, uh, amen, people will try to get you, uh, amen, you ever try to wear somebody else's shoes, them shoes is pulled over to one side, while you put your foot in there and you think, what is wrong with that thing, that, my foot won't, I don't want to walk on my foot, and you get to looking at the one that's got shoes, every pair of shoes they got, amen, is moved over to the right or their toes is turned up or they got some kind of funny and don't go to looking at everybody after I said this but every one of us has got a different way we walk. Amen. I can't wear your shoes. You won't want to wear my shoes more than likely. Amen. Because I walk to one side part of the time. I don't know what I'll do the rest of the time, but at least on one, at least on one shoe I do. Amen. And what I'm trying to say is it ain't going to feel right, amen, wearing your shoes. I've got to wear the shoe that's designed for me to wear in order for it to be comfortable. Amen. And we need, amen, to follow the Lord. I could say a whole lot right here, amen, about now if the Lord tells you to do a new thing, it'll be all right. But I hate to change shoes I hate to wear new shoes because every time they put a blister on my foot, I bought me a hundred and something dollar pair of shoes back a few months ago, and the second day I had to take them off, put the old ones back on, put on a Band-Aid, and I walked like this. I looked like Chester for about a week till that thing healed up. The new shoes ruined me. I finally got to where later on when that thing healed up, I put my new ones back on again uh, and, and finally got them broke in. I just hate to break in shoes. Uh, amen. The ones that I've been wearing, uh, I could put them things on. I didn't even know I had shoes on. I could just work and do whatever I needed to do. I was comfortable. I could, I could, uh, didn't have to worry about uh, scratching them or scarring them because I didn't think about my shoes. I thought about what I was supposed to be doing. Uh, amen. Didn't have to concentrate on all that. But what I'm saying is we need to have to follow the Lord. Uh, have to wear the shoe that he's designed for our foot. Uh, and when we get our foot in the right shoe, it's going to be comfortable. It's going to feel right. Amen. And then we need to hold on, amen, with everything we can. Wrap our fingers in the shoestrings and hold on, amen, because it, we might wind up walking in a way that we've never walked before. Amen. They go against tradition or whatever. And that's as far as I'm going to go on that part of it right there right now. But see, the Lord knew there's a difference between the goats and the sheep. The goats would always stand up on their back legs, uh, reach over a fence, uh, try to eat something, uh, amen, out of the sassafras leaves or something uh, in a bush or a tree uh, over the fence where they don't belong being. But the sheep just looks down to the ground. They listen to the voice of the master. The goat don't listen to nobody. I put my britches on just like you do. I'll find my own way. Mm -hmm. Amen. Goats has destroyed a whole lot of good churches too. And it don't take but one or two goats. Especially if you've got a committee in a church. You really got a problem. You've got a committee of five. You've got three goats and two sheep. You've got trouble. Amen, because they'll wind up tearing something up. I've said that a lot of times, and I'll still say it again today. We need to listen to the voice of the shepherd. Let the shepherd guide us and direct us, and then we can eat. Lay down by the green, uh, in the green grass. Amen, by the still waters. Amen, take comfort in his rod and his staff. Amen, that gives us comfort. Amen, as we walk this walk for the Lord. Now, I'm just about done. I've always said when I'm done, I'm done. And I'm about done. I want to encourage you, if you're here tonight, and we're going to play, uh, today we're going to play a song in just a minute. I'll give an altar call. And if you're here and you've got a need, 
don't be thinking about what somebody's going to think about you. When you come to the altar and pray, just come talk to the Lord. Amen. And if you're watching my television or you're listening to my radio, excuse me, uh, pick up the telephone and, and call the number you see on the screen and the number, if you're listening by radio, that you'll hear at the end of the program and call for prayer. Amen. This thing's about to draw to an end. We don't, we've got, and those of us that are left, we've got way too much stuff to do to be cold and indifferent, backslid, out of the will of God. Amen. We need to get fired back up, don't we? So we've got a testimony we can share with other people. Amen. You don't have to go to an altar and confess everything you're doing. Amen. To the people. You just need to come and confess to the Lord. Amen. That's what we need to do. Amen. And he in secret. Uh, amen. Will restore your soul. Uh, amen. Will bless you and set you free. You get up and tell it in front of everybody. You ain't careful. You'll have it in the newspaper. Amen. To be on Fox News or somewhere. Amen. In a few days. <laughs> CNN or somewhere. Amen. Stand with us if you would please tonight. If you've got a need of any kind, this altar is open. Don't be scared to come and pray. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed because there's not anybody in this church that hasn't had to go to an altar several times. Not because we robbed a bank, but because we felt that we had failed and come short of the glory of God and we just felt like we needed to pray. Amen. Now if you feel like that you need to pray, come just like they are, just like you are. All right, I hope you enjoyed the program uh, today. Hope that it was a blessing to you. Um, we are dependent on contributions from people like you that watches the program, that likes the program, to send money in to keep this on the air. Um, those that um, are led of the Lord to give, I'm going to tell you a, a couple of ways that you can send money in. The first way is you can send your check or money order uh, to Jimmy Wilson Ministries, Post Office Box 1346, Glasgow, Kentucky, and that's uh, 42142. Again, that's Jimmy Wilson Ministries, one, Post Office Box 1346, Glasgow, G-L-A-S-G-O-W, Kentucky, 42142. Or you can log on to our church's website at www.theshepherdshouse.net, and you can click on the Donate button. And it'll run it through PayPal, which is one of the most trusted services uh, that, that we have in America. And uh, I think everything will be fine. And Or you can, uh, if you don't have internet, you can give us a call and we'll be, someone will be on the phone. And uh, we'll have the capability of running that, your debit card or credit card, uh, through uh, that way if we need to. And uh, here's some things that I wanted to share with you out of the Word of God. We need to take our our tithes into the storehouse, which is our home church, and then your offerings can go to other ministries. And Luke chapter 6, verse 38 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Men shall give into your bosom, for with the same measure that you met, with all it shall be measured to you again. Malachi 3 verse 10 says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall destroy the fruits of he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. If you believe in this ministry, then uh, we're going to pray that you'll help support this ministry. And I've had several that sent in um, one-time offerings, and that's good. We appreciate that. But in order uh, to really keep the ministry going, we really need to have a continuous um, uh, coming in of, of what we can get each month. And I appreciate the ones. We have a few that does give uh, the same thing and sometimes even extra than what they normally give each month. And that uh, helps carry the load so we're able to do what we're doing. Right now, we're on uh, TV in Scottsville, Kentucky, which goes into southern Kentucky and northern Tennessee areas. 
And then we're on in Chicago, MCTV, which goes into um, the Chicago, Illinois area, into Indiana, into Michigan, and Wisconsin. So uh, we praise the Lord in parts of those states. We praise the Lord for that. Now we're also on HLE Radio uh, that uh, is on uh, twice per week. And uh, that goes out to several people there. That way, in fact, it goes into 139 countries there. So, and then we've got our church's website. We've got archives uh, there where we've got several of the sermons over the last few uh, several weeks that's posted there. And you can view that and, and watch some of the sermons there at any time at your leisure. So we're getting out the best we can, as fast as we can, trying to reach as many people as we can. And uh, we need your support to help us reach those people. You pray about it and be led of the Lord. I'm not a prosperity preacher. I'm not going to make you promises that you're going to get rich or your boyfriend or girlfriend is going to come back and make up with you. I, I'm not making you promises like that. But I will tell you, if you'll sow seed in this ministry, the Lord will bless you. And if you'll help me reach the multitudes, if we don't reach but one soul and keep them out of hell, it'll be worth every bit of the effort and all the money that we all could give. God bless you. Pray about giving. Be led of the Holy Spirit. Support your home church first. God bless you.